Hello, welcome to part three of lecture one of aerospace propulsion. I hope you've had a, taken a few minutes to think about the question I asked at the end of part two. Now let's work towards getting an answer. So let's think about what the optimum amount of acceleration is. Um, so let's do this by considering the effect that uh, our choice of acceleration has on the mass of the propulsion system. So let's divvy up the mass of our rocket. Um, the total mass is m naught. This is comprised of structural mass, engine mass, payload mass, and uh, propellant mass. At the burnout time TB, all the propellant has been burned. Then at that point, the propulsion mass is zero. So the mass of the rocket at burnout over the initial mass is m naught minus m prop over m naught, or one minus m prop over m naught. And we'll c or we'll call this one minus m prime prop. So m primes, or any, uh, all the m primes mean the mass of whatever thing the subscript is divided by the initial mass. Now ideally, we'd like that non-dimensional mass uh, to be about one, right? Um, but, of course, we can't actually achieve that in practice. So what we want to minimize Right, um, because we have this limitation that one minus m prime prop must must of course be m prime structure plus m prime for the engine plus m prime for the payload, and what we want to minimize is the structural and engine masses. But the engine mass typically would be proportional to the thrust it produces. So if we define a parameter alpha, which is the mass of the engine times gravitational acceleration over the thrust. Um, we can write that in this way: it's m of the engine over m naught times a naught over g, or m prime engine over n. Right. N is the number of G's uh, uh, felt by the pilot minus, minus gravitational acceleration. So the actual number of G's of acceleration one would feel is N plus 1. So if we use this new definition to update our rocket equation, we, we get this. We get M prime at burnout is M prime of the payload plus M prime of the structure plus N times alpha. And the rocket equation then becomes this, right? So we've got VB minus V0 um, minus C times this natural logarithm of the M prime payload plus M prime structure plus N alpha, and then minus another term that's minus C, uh, one minus M prime payload, M prime structure over N minus alpha. This first ter term is called the ideal velocity increment, and it decreases with N uh, because the engine gets heavier. And the second term is the gravity loss, as previously mentioned, and this also decreases with n um, due to a reduced burn time. It's, this is not really obvious just looking at these terms, so I'm going to walk through those trends for each one. So let's start with the term on the left, the ideal velocity uh, increment term. Again, this decreases with n, and here's why. n times alpha is, t is normally a number much smaller than 1. And also, of course, the mass fractions are smaller than 1. So increasing n means that the argument of the natural log gets closer to 1, but is always less than 1. And a natural logarithm of a number less than 1 is negative. So, and there's a minus sign out front, so the bigger n means that this entire positive term becomes smaller in magnitude. Then the second term, uh, the gravity loss term, also decreases with n, so n is going to be greater than 1, or else the rocket isn't going anywhere. Um, and alpha is much, much less than 1 in normally. So the first term in parentheses is more significant than the, than the minus alpha. And so increasing n means the whole term, including uh, the, the c outside, gets smaller. So how do we find how the optimized behavior would occur? We do this by differentiating, of course, um, to find the, the minimum or maximum. So we optimize by differentiating with respect to n, and this gives a quadratic equation. And the solution of the quadratic equation is what's shown here, that the optimum value of n is a function of m prime payload and m prime structure uh, and alpha. If we take some. Uh, reasonable estimates uh, for typical rockets. Um, the, pr the structure M prime might be about 10%, and an alpha value might be about 0 0.02. And so if we look at this, then what we get is the optimum value of N as a function of P 
payload fraction, m prime payload. And even though this looks like a very curvy plot, if I look at the numbers, what I see is that the optimum is not a strong function of payload fraction. Whether we're talking, you know, 5% or 60% of the rocket being payload, you know, we're only talking a 20% variation-ish in the value of the optimum value of n. It's always between 3 and 4. Now again, we've neglected drag, including this would yield a different answer. For drag, if we had a large n, that would mean the rocket would hit higher speeds at low altitude where air density is high. That would increase the drag losses, especially for small rockets. Um, that would be the impact of including drag. But the main takeaway here is that um, the value, the optimum value of n is, you know, in the vicinity of about three and a half um, for over a very wide range uh, of payload fractions. The next thing I'd like to introduce is the idea of rocket staging. Staging rockets means having multiple engines that fire in sequence and separating the old engines before starting the new ones. So why do this? What's the aim of having multiple stages? Again, I want you to take a few minutes to think about this question, try to come up with an intuitive answer yourself, and then move on to the next part of the video.